Well, greetings, my beloved clients and friends. It's time for a market update. Uh, so last three days have been really rough. Uh, and the reason for that was inflation. On Friday morning, the inflation numbers came out and they were really bad. Um, inflation was up 1% month over month. So if you annualize that, that's like 12%, right? So they weren't expecting it to be that high. Um, so Thursday, in anticipation of that number, the market started pulling back towards the end of the day. Friday was really bad. Then over the weekend, as people are really digesting what that means, that inflation is as high as it is, uh, Monday, uh, the sell-off continued. So what can we do about that? What, what's the cause and what's the, the fix? And and how do we position ourselves in light of that? So the problem with inflation is that demand is much higher than supply. So that causes the prices of things to go up. And, and supply is too low for a couple of reasons. Um, one is we had these, uh, the supply, supply channels have been disrupted um china's not uh their zero covid policy they produce so much stuff and they stop producing when when they see people with covid so and i mean they shut down cities that are you know three times the size of new york because uh, a couple of people get covid and so that really aff aff affects the supply of things so but the big, the, the big um, driver of prices is the price of oil. And oil has been going up. It's up over $120 a barrel now. And um, I mean, just end of last year, it was around 60. So it's basically doubled in the last you know six months or so. And so that, it's a huge driver of the cost of, of everything. Um, another issue is like the, the war in Ukraine. Um, for example, Ukraine and Russia are, are, are huge producers of, of food, in particular wheat. And if, if they're too busy fighting to plant wheat, then, you know, there's this wheat shortage. And I was listening to this, this one talk and, uh, so this guy was talking about the, the shortage of wheat. And so one guy asked him, so do you think that means that uh, the price of our cereal is gonna go up? And, and the guy said, well, yes, but not because of what you think. He says the biggest cost in the box of a cereal, in a box of cereal is not the wheat. It's the packaging and the transportation. Okay, it's getting, you know, all those raw materials to the factory and then getting that box of cereal from the factory to the grocery aisle. Um, and that, and that's done with oil, right? With the diesel fuel in, in the trucks that, that, that move the products. So any type of product that needs to be moved from here to there, when the price of oil doubles, their transportation costs double and and they're gonna to have to push that cost into the product. So, and until we get the price of oil to come down, we're gonna have an inflation problem. And it looks like oil's not coming down, it's going up. And, and one of the reasons is um, the war in Ukraine. Um, so there's this big embargo on Russian oil. So if they don't buy Russian oil, they got to buy some other oil. And now there's more demand for that oil and it's bringing the price up. And the other thing is this push to, um, you know, green energy and, and sustainable energy and, and this worry about the, uh, the climate, climate change and, and the effect of greenhouse gases. So, but you can't just stop using oil overnight because those, Alternative energies can't fill the gap and it's, and it's driving the price of oil up even more. So, so how do you combat inflation? Well, two things. 
you could attack it from either either side. You can either bring demand down or bring supply up. And so the Fed cannot control supply. And so they their only alternative is to try to bring demand down. And the and the way they bring demand down is to raise prices, you know, um, which is inflation, right? When prices go up, demand goes down. But so the Fed can't control supply and they can't really control the prices of things. What they can control is the cost of things. And there's a difference between the price and the cost. So let me give you an example. If you're gonna buy a $500,000 house, most people are gonna finance that house. So they're gonna borrow money and let's say they borrow money at 3% and that gives them a mortgage payment. And so that's really the cost of buying the house is that mortgage payment. So let's say that same house for $500,000, um, but instead of getting a mortgage at 3%, you get a mortgage at 6%. So the price of the house stayed at 500,000, but the cost of the house doubled. And when the cost goes up, then demand goes down. So the Fed could influence not the price of things, but the cost of things. If, if it, um, and the cost is the cost of money. So, and that only works on goods that are financed, right? If you're paying cash for it, well, you know, they can't really control that. But if you're borrowing money to buy something, then the Fed could, could control the cost, right? So you borrow money to buy a house or you borrow money to buy a car and interest rates have doubled, the cost is doubled. And if, if you keep raising the prices of stuff and the cost of stuff and, and people are out, burn through their savings now they got to finance stuff they got to put on their credit card and the and the credit card interest rate has gone up well eventually people are going to stop are going to spend less because the costs keep going up but it's a but it's a brutal and and um inefficient way to bring demand down uh because to do it you got to just squeeze the consumer we're gonna make it so expensive for you to buy stuff that you're gonna stop buying stuff, right? I mean, and that's extremely painful. Look at the housing situation, right? The house. So even if prices of houses went went down, if the cost is going up um, because of inflation, because of the Fed raising interest rates, I mean that's just painful to the to the consumer, right? So. But that's really the Fed's only tool, so um, they 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 got to kill inflation with a blunt instrument, and it's and it's very bloody. Okay, so a better way to fix inflation, and an easier and cleaner, and uh, just all around better way to do it would be to increase supply. And the thing that we need to increase the supply of the most would be oil. Um, and, and the sad thing is we have the capability to do that. Uh, America has become a big oil producer um, through, through technology, you know, fracking and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, President Biden came in and, and there's this uh, general sense that, you know, we don't want to be an oil producer. Because it's bad for the environment. Well, there comes a time when you have to to focus on what's urgent, uh, even in light of what's important. So, it's like a some guy that's a smoker, and he happens to be bleeding out from an injury, and uh, you're like, "Well, you gotta really need to stop smoking." True, he does need to stop smoking. But what he really needs to do is stop bleeding, okay? And, and, and the U.S. economy is bleeding because the price of oil is so high. Um, yeah, oil creates, uh, you know, greenhouse gases and, and uh, climate change and stuff like that. But it also is killing the economy that the oil price is so high. So in the short run solution is to bring the price of oil down. I mean, yeah, to bring the price of oil down. And until we see the price of oil coming down, 
we're not going to see inflation go away because like i said you know the transportation cost is baked into every good that you buy ironically something like netflix you know something that you just download SaaS products uh, you know docusign they don't have transportation costs to move their their service to their consumer so you think that they would be a little bit immune to this uh, this cost problem uh, but so i don't like to be political but biden has made this problem much much worse number one by limiting our oil production and uh so his solution is to go to saudi arabia and say we're gonna buy more oil from you we don't need to buy more oil we need to sell more oil and uh he's going to exxon and he's saying you guys need to lower your your prices because the oil companies they don't need to produce more when the price is so high they're they are it's true they are phenomenally profitable right now because the price of their goods went way up and so they can they can make a lot more money they could sell the same amount of oil that they were selling last year at sixty dollars a barrel now they're selling it at 120 and double their their revenue and uh their profits go up even more even though they don't have to produce any more so they're not in a real rush to increase production and, and lower the price of their um their product so in a way it's it would be good if those companies helped and, and produced more oil but as a country we could produce more oil as well and uh, biden seems like that's not the solution that he's looking for but that's the solution that we need okay so the solution is to increase the price the 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 supply of oil and by the way how is this affecting the war in Russia? Because R Russia is a big oil producer. And guess what? You know, there's this big embargo on, on Russian oil, but that's not stopping China, a country with the biggest population in the world, and India, the country with the second biggest population in the world, from buying all kinds of Russian oil. So, you know, Putin has an outlet for his oil and uh, he's flush with cash because because the price of oil is going way up and it's helping him in his war efforts that the price of oil is so high so it's really not working in our favor on, on any uh, from any angle that the price of oil is so high right now so there's really three things that that biden did to to make this problem much worse and one as we talked about was um curbing our oil production as a country that made the problem worse right in an effort to be greener and and that type of thing um, you know eventually we do that's a long-term solution it's like stopping smoking but right now we're bleeding and we need to focus on uh, on more oil so that was one thing that that he did that made the problem worse the second thing was um, when COVID hit, we, he went on this massive spending spree. And it, I mean, every other word out of his mouth was trillions. They were going to spend trillions on this and trillions on that. And, and at a time when, when the Fed was, was, had its foot on the, on the pedal, Biden doubled down and put his foot on the pedal. And it just pushed the economy uh, into massive overdrive. And it, and it created this inflation. It kind of reminds me of, of what um, Bush, Bush Jr. did. You know, he inherited, when he came into office in 2001, you know, he inherited the starts of a, of a big pullback, that dot-com thing. And, uh, and, and he increased spending. And it helped, right? And it, and it really got the economy back going again. And, so then when, uh, when a second term rolled around and the economy was, was kind of back on its feet, he, he continued the same playbook. And, and then he created this, this bubble, not only him, but um, 
but so what worked the first term uh, made it worse the second term and and so so Biden did the same thing I mean he just he just spent way too much and so he created inflation so decreasing oil output created inflation uh, massively increasing in spending created inflation and then the third thing that he's doing that's making this problem worse is his stance on the war in Ukraine he wants it to continue and he wants to just punish Putin instead of instead of pushing for a speedy resolution and and either having avoided that conflict or or letting it continue and even encouraging it um, that's wreaking havoc on on the global economy uh, and here in the U.S. Uh, as part of the global economy, so those three things he are, he he just made inflation worse with those things, and and um, and so now it's up to the Fed to 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 slow down this inflation. And like I said, their method of slowing down inflation is like a it's like a blunt force object. I hate to use a gory analogy, but. I was sent to Haiti in in 95 to uphold democracy and, and one of the first things that we did in, uh, in the military is a weapons cache and we took all the weapons away um, from Haiti uh, and but the killing still continued and so we'd go out on, on patrol the next day and we'd find these these people that were killed and they weren't killed by gunshot they were killed by clubbing and and it was just, it, it just kind of, it was worse, you know, because they didn't have guns to kill people, so they killed people with sticks, and and uh, it was just very ugly. So, and, and and that's the way the the Fed, the Fed is trying to kill inflation is by hitting it with a stick, which is uh, raising interest rates, when it would be much easier to just. Uh, more oil so what do we do as a portfolio manager in a situation like this well we've really lightened up the portfolio half the positions that we had at the start of the year we don't own anymore um, we're just out of uh, everything but the highest quality companies pretty much and and, 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 we're, and we're looking to sell more, but um, prices have come down on these companies. So, and, I, and the, the remaining ones that we have, and they're good companies, and it's possible that prices are going to go down more. But I, I mean, we were in the office looking at, you know, what do we do? What do we sell? What do, or is there anything to buy? And, and we're like, no, we don't really want to buy much right now. Um, we did buy a, a a commodities fund because inflation is here. is it seems like it's here for a while, and, and commodities, the price of, of goods, which the biggest commodity is oil, is going to go up. So we we bought that, but we're like we need to we need to lighten the load on on and sell more. But then I ask myself, you know, if I'm sitting down with a client six months from now, and I tell them, hey, I. I sold Amazon. Uh, are they gonna pat me on the back or are they gonna say, well, why'd you do that? You know, and now give me another capital gain because it's still much higher than from where we bought it. And two, it's still a great company. You know, why did you sell Google? And so, I mean, our great companies are, are, are prices that I would be buying rather than be selling. So we're holding on to these great companies because eventually um, the easy way or the hard way we're, we're gonna fix this inflation and these companies are still gonna be great um, and so you know it's painful but we're holding on to the good ones because they're they're priced so cheap to it's to, to to really sell um, so that's all we could do is just um, anything but the highest quality we're getting rid of um, we're holding we're holding on through this difficult time because eventually these, these great companies are gonna uh, 
we, we believe will, will be fairly priced. And, and looking back at June of 2022, I think in in three three years, you'd be like, well, that was a pretty decent entry point. Prices were really cheap. There was a lot of bad news out there. And, um, you know, that, that would have been a, a good time to buy. Um, most things, I mean, I mean, well, we 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 uh, trimmed our position in Bitcoin. Uh, thank thank God on uh, last week because uh, that came way back way down. Um, so I mean we're actively managing through this and navigating, but I'm telling you until we see oil come down, uh, we're in for a, a challenging year, which we've been saying since the beginning of the year. Uh, but we don't really want to sell quality especially when it's as cheap as it is right now. So that's where we are, and I hope this helps. Um, I mean, we're, we're, we're on it. We uh, stay in touch with the news and also stay in touch with valuations and, 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 and discipline and invest in investment uh, strategies, because you, you can't, the market is unpredictable, but, but quality companies at a good price are, are gonna uh, be a good thing to own over the long term. So I hope that helps. Hope you guys have a great day.